most beautiful part of model trains for me, I think, is the idea that you can create a scenario, a picture that's in your mind uh, about how things used to be in days gone by, especially with, with some of the railroad scenes that we build, and try and recreate that in miniature. It's a combination of art, and engineering, having a vision, and pulling it all together to build a picture that someone can look at and can appreciate and say, I remember that, that, that looks about right. And then you know you've, you've, you've really done something magical. There's probably a couple of reasons for the continuing fascination with trains. One is the evocation of the past. Uh, the great machines, steam, fire, cinders, uh, the sounds, the whistles, the bells, the uh, abiding influence of railroads in movies and music and other aspects of culture. Railroads began in North Carolina in 1834 with chartering the Wilmington and Raleigh Railroad. Its route ran from Wilmington northward to Weldon near the Virginia state line and its purpose was primarily to enhance trade between the inland areas and the port of Wilmington, which was the largest city in North Carolina at the time. We have uh, the, the modelers group of the Wilmington Railroad Museum is uh, attempting to set a new world record for the longest model train. I remember him inquiring uh, at that time about this possibility and he was just collecting information. And we sort of ran out of exciting things to do. We built the, uh, the model hall that was pretty well under completion and we get together lunch hours and try to think of things to expand the exposure of the museum to the community and we came up with this idea of a Guinness World Record. As time progressed, we seemed to meet with him a little, uh, maybe monthly, until we made an arrangement with him um, uh, to host this wonderful event, um, the world's longest model train uh, for the Guinness Book of World Records. The first couple of months we really spent planning and thinking of how we're going to do it, how we're going to power it, what kind of engines we're going to use for power, what kind of cars and so forth. Very early on we went out to all of our modelers as well as modelers from some of the local uh, model railroad uh, clubs in this general southeastern North Carolina area. We were trying to find a commitment for about 1,700 cars, that's about how many we're going to need. Uh, it's not simply a case of putting locomotives and boxcars on a track, but the idea that you've got to have all of these locomotives interacting together in a way that is going to move the whole train forward instead of working against each other. Just getting the cars uh, the different uh, model train cars is one thing, but to make sure that they uh, run smoothly, that their couplers match each other, uh, and that they'll stay together and stay on the track is quite a task. Oh, that right there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, on the hold it, hold it. Flip the switch down there. Switch on. Do you want to get a close-up of that before we clean up the mess? <laughs> what happened was you went to the next block and then it changed too much. I guess. I guess. We no, got one, all excited well, one thing was to watch the meter. I think the most exciting, fascinating uh, in this process is just watching how one, our group of modelers are working together to get this done. It's just amazing to me how a bunch of folks with different ideas about how things to get done uh, can all work together. Here it is. You got it? Yeah. Last piece. Oh. There's another one for you. Okay.
We found it. That's it. Oh, there's a potential for being a good weekend because I think there's some there's a, a car show going on or something. I think that weekend. I think the more people that are downtown, the better off. We're in great shape. We'll finish up building these cars in another two weeks, uh, and then our biggest task is going to be testing them all and making sure we have it all together. Try something. Tell them I'm going to try and deliberately short it. Metal frames on the uh, wheel sets. Two cars with metal frames on the wheel sets had derailed, and the metal frames had dropped onto the track, causing a short circuit. Uh, most of our problems have been random. The main problem is cars cars unhooking. That's, not, that's down. I mean, that's that's tight. To make a long story short, we're we're just not having too much progress. Uh, we're not making too much headway today. Well, but that, yeah. you would expect yeah, it's coming back, so. It's coming back what? Open circuit. Uh, so it means there's no short. That means that the car that, he, yeah, that, back on. that Rich put back on the track is, was the problem all along. I think that we're still having trouble with the couplers holding together because of the difference in speeds of some of the engines. If you think about it, if the train is already going around the whole thing, right? Right, right. The whole thing has to move at the same speed. Whew. If it doesn't, we're going to have a derail. Something's going to be pushing fast and something's pulling, and something's going to come off the track. You think everything's going to go according to plan? Uh, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> and if it comes off the track, you can't pull it back together again because it weighs half a ton. So if it comes off, we're, we're going to figure out how to fill that gap with maybe. It depends. If, if the box car's a bit longer, then you know, fill it with a longer box car. Otherwise, we've got to try and take up the slack between the couplings and make it all come back together again. But yeah, you've got to keep the whole train together for the entirety of the uh, of the 200-yard run, and that's the challenge. Will the couplers hold? Gremlins. You know, there's always gremlins in a system this complex. Uh, but uh, within the next 24 hours, hopefully. Uh, we'll come to the bottom of the issues and resolve everything. All right, everybody who has a whistle to stop it, and you're watching, stop it, one long blast stops. The only two blasts to start will be Dan. Our expectations have been so far exceeded in everything we've done so far that I don't honestly know what that day is going to be like. It could be an absolute madhouse. No doubt in my mind we can accomplish all of that. But the record requires that we move the train intact for 600 feet. That will be the challenge that we don't have any derailments and any power problems along the way. We have the longest train. We've got a lot of interest. We're selling tickets thanks to you. You're making it a great event. And uh, looking forward to a wonderful, wonderful uh, hot time tomorrow. Right? Right. But now if I do this, does anything happen? <laughs> <laughs> The real purpose behind all this was to get some advertising recognition for the museum itself. Gentlemen.
Search your engines. If it was easy, anyone could do it. Who blew the whistle? Most of the problems we have with our train were due to a failure of the couplers. But what happened was that due to the increased tension and the weight of this train, this coupler would tend to rise up like that, causing very little grip between the two, and when the tension increased, the couplers would break apart. Who blew the doggone whistle? This one's three seconds faster in, in our we test, can, so it's not it. that much. So, but you want to put a slower one in there? No, we want to put a faster one in there. Oh, you're figuring these out. Pretty cars, they look like mine. We've dealt with this piece of track before. It was giving us fits yesterday. All right. Hit it. This has not been an easy thing. I guess if it were easy, it wouldn't be a world record. That's good fit. Everybody's worked know, real hard on it. <laughs> working very hard. Wonderful achievement for them. Okay, they put in a lot of work. This is pretty darn exciting. That's all I can say to be a part of this today. All kind of hours that you indicated in here that they've worked on this thing, and so it's a lot of work going into it. So I'm confident they'll break the record. I'm happy to see the young people being interested in because we need the young people to take over for the older ones. I had Thomas trains and um, yeah. I, I want to be a train conductor when I grow up. You know, they, they are dedicated to keeping that history alive and I think that, you know, Wilmington has a lot of history to it, but the railroad was a key part of it that employed so many people through the years. And I really have my doubts, but uh, the team came through. Look at it. I mean, it's uh, quite an achievement. Good for you. Thank you. Hey, you just posted it on the internet for you. Did you? Oh, yeah. Oh, great. We're, we're, we're actually letting all the media know, too. I believe we were going to be able to do it completely. It, <laughs> it was fabulous. Yeah. What a great effort. And a great team we had work doing it. <laughs> that's, great. That's uh, terrific job. It all comes down to today. Well, the. <laughs> yeah, that's better. Yeah. I'm just recording it. <laughs>